Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing Hunt Showdown Early Access on the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. I'll be doing 1080p, 900p and 720p and I'll be using an i3-8100, Ryzen 3-1200 and i5-8400. To skip 10 of those sections of the video, check the timestamps down in the description. So first of all, I'll show you the i3-8100 with a 60 frames per second target on 1080p. That means that I'll lower the settings trying to hit 50 to 60 frames per second because it's very difficult to maintain. 60 fps constant then i'll just crank up the settings to almost the maximum targeting 30 frames per second and unfortunately sometimes it drops below 30 and there's a lot of trees plus reflections plus a couple enemies on screen it doesn't happen all the time but it can happen then i do the same on 900p i'll show you a 60 and 30 frames per second configuration and then at 720p by just using maximum settings i stay over 50 frames per second the big majority of the time but you'll notice some drops in the gpu usage so i'll be testing more cpus for that reason after all that with the i3 i switched to the ryzen 3 1200 without any overclock applied since the g4560 pc is not working right now some of the ram slots just died i'm just running some tests to see what's going on so in the meantime i'll show you ryzen 3 and for that i'll show you 1080p targeting 30 frames per second and then 720p targeting 60 so you can see how the CPU performs trying to get 30 and 60 frames per second. And finally, I'll show you the i5-8400 and I'll do exactly the same thing as with the Ryzen 3 testing. I'll show you first 1080p targeting 30, then 720p targeting 60, and that'll be about it. I'll now talk about the options menu. It improved significantly compared to the time I tested this game before. And we only had three presets, low, medium and high, the motion blur and anti-aliasing option, if I recall correctly. And the ones that gave me the biggest difference in performance by lowering them were lighting quality and shadow quality. By just lowering this from high to low on 1080p on the GTX 1050 Di as an example, I got a boost from 30 frames per second to 50 to 60 frames per second. So yeah, a significant performance boost. Then effects, post process, particles, just lower those in groups if you're trying to get even higher frame rates, but it won't be a huge FPS boost compared to the options I just mentioned. Then on the anti-aliasing options, we have SMAA 1X, SMAA 1TX, and SMAA 2TX. I usually like to stay at least in SMAA SMAA 1TX, but there's some ghosting going on with those, so if you don't like that, just stick to SMAA 1X. Then on the advanced graphics, we have surface format optimization, toggle GPU tessellation, 2-pass scene rendering, and 2-pass lighting. So far using 2-pass scene rendering and 2-pass lighting give me a performance boost. In the information at the right, it says that in some old GPUs it can provide a performance boost to disable this. In my case it improved performance, so just give it a try while you are in game. It changes in real time. And then we also got the GPU tessellation, which is tessellation. It's a performance hit, but it was a very small difference in performance, at least in my experience. And the surface format optimization, according to the game, it reduces the size of intermediate textures at the cost of dynamic color range, potentially improving GPU performance. So when I'm targeting 60 frames per second on all the videos testing this game, I enabled this feature, but personally I didn't notice a huge difference with this enabled or disabled and it requires you to restart the game after you change it. So if you're trying to get the best performance possible, I will just enable this feature. If not, just keep it off. Unfortunately, on my G4560 PC, I'm unable to test this game right now. Three of the four RAM slots just died out of nowhere. I was playing the game and the PC crashed, then it wasn't booting up. So only one of the RAM slots is working. I cannot do dual channel. I will be trying to fix it. We'll see what's the issue have to do some testing but right now i'll be using the ryzen 3 1200 instead without overclock and so far testing the i3 8100 ryzen 3 1200 and i5 8400 i got stutters with all the cpus even targeting 30 frames per second the cpu usage goes sky high sometimes even on the i5 8400 but so far the biggest difference between the cpus was less stutter on the i5 way less often, the frame times were more consistent, and the GPU usage stayed higher for longer. Then the i3-8100 was better than the Ryzen 3 1200 at least in my experience on this game, but sometimes when you move the camera very quickly you will find some stutters here and there and drops in the GPU usage. The Ryzen 3 1200 the same happened but it happened more often, and when targeting 60 frames per second there were more drops in the GPU usage. Still the game is playable if you're not targeting constant 60 frames per second. With those expectations you should be fine but yeah the game is very cpu and gpu intensive especially when you're targeting 60 frames per second but remember this is early access the game should be improving as time goes on and i'll be testing this again once it releases i guess but yeah guys that's pretty much it i hope you keep enjoying the video thanks for watching and see you next time <laughs>
Oh, my God. 